We've talked about stress and rest and organizing that in terms of periodization. What if we just zoom in now on just the stress component? This is where we get to a concept called training intensity distribution. And this is specifically how we organize and distribute stress in our periodized training plan. So in context of periodization. So the way that we, the way that we organize and think about stress is in terms of the duration of the stress and the intensity of the stress. And that's pretty straightforward. The duration is obviously how much time are you spending in a stressed state? And then the intensity is how stressed are you? So we can measure intensity well, duration, we obviously measure through time and then intensity. We can measure in a variety of different ways. We can look at it in terms of energy system, power zone, pace, heart rate, and the way that you're going to measure the intensity depends largely on your discipline. But in cycling, we use power zones to measure the intensity level. Now, this is a really important point to understand. And this, this gets really confused, especially in conversations about polarized training, a training intensity distribution is not the same thing as a power zone. So a power zone is how we measure intensity. A training intensity distribution is how we organize intensity and duration to accomplish the stress component of the endurance training equation. So power zone, how we measure intensity, training intensity distribution, how we organize intensity and duration. So for the discussion today, and again, we're just clarifying so that we're all using the same language for this conversation today, but we're going to be using what's known as a three zone model. And that's because this aligns with the current definition of polarized training and with the current research on polarized training. And the three zone model is set up essentially like this zone. One is the easy or the low intensity zone. And that goes roughly from 50% of VO two max up to your LT one or your lactate threshold one LT one is a point at which we just start to see lactate accumulating in the blood. Then between LT one and LT two LT two being your lactate threshold that most people are more familiar with the lactate threshold two is where we see the rate of change, the rate of accumulation in your blood level. I'm sorry, the rate of accumulation in your lactate in the blood start to increase. So it's really just a rate of change that we see at that lactate threshold. So between LT1 and LT2 is what's known as that moderate intensity zone two, and then intensity levels above that lactate two LT2 is high intensity. And that's known as zone three in this zone th three zone model. There's a quick note on this. So we've established Endurance training, stress plus stress is adaptation. Periodization is how we organize the stress plus the rest. And if we zoom in on the stress, how we organize just the stress component is your training intensity distribution. So when we talk about polarized training, polarized training refers to a very specific intensity training intensity distribution. And in this training intensity distribution approach, you spend by far the most time in that low zone, zone one under LT one you spend some time in the high intensity zone, zone three above LT2, and you spend the least amount, if any, in that middle zone between LT1 and LT2. And Dr. Steven Seiler, that, whom Nate just mentioned, is the first person, he coined the term polarized in a 2004 paper. I'm pretty sure this is where it, where it landed, but this was a paper called Training and Performance Characteristics Among Norwegian International Rowers from 1970 to 2001. And what he observed in this retrospective study was that these elite athletes spent about 80% of the time of their training in low intensity zones in that zone one, and about 20% of the time in that high intensity zone, zone three. Now it's really important to note that he based this observation based on a binary categorization of days. So a day was either high intensity or low intensity. So if he, he calculated this 80, 20 ratio based on days, not time, not time and zone. Now, this is really interesting because subsequent research that's looking at training intensity distributions and specifically looking at the polarized training intensity distribution bases, bases this ratio or bases the ratios that determine whether or not a training intensity distribution is polarized on time in zone. And that's obviously really different from days. And so when you, sh when you translate days to time and zone, you start to get different ratios. And this is just an important thing to keep in mind. Cause again, this is one of those tricky things that can make talking about polar polarized training a little bit confusing and a little bit sticky. 
Yeah, on our forum alone, there's probably 500 posts that just debate this is the, the <laughs> what days are hard versus the time and zone. But what we want to think about it is more of a principle, right? Mm -hmm. There is the hard days hard, easy days easy, and you're doing most of the hard days. And then in the science and the literature that we're going to get into that talk about exactly the time and zone, that can still teach us something, right? But there's not, um, Styler himself says it's it's more of a, uh, it's, it's a, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I just used guideline it. guidelines <laughs> rather than like a specific training plan. Mm -hmm. Right. So one of the things that we'll see with the studies that we're going to look at is some of them use what's called the polarization index to determine whether a particular training intensity distribution approach is polarized or not. And the polarization index is an equation that uses time in zone, not days, time in zone in order to calculate what this, what they refer to as a polarization index. And if that polarization index has a value of two or greater, it's considered a polarized training plan. We'll get into why that's a little bit gray. That's a little bit of a gray area, but that's just something to keep in mind. So a lot of these studies, in fact, the vast majority of them are looking at time and zone, but remember that that's different than basing the ratio on days. And this gets even more confusing <laughs> because we say polarized capital P training intensity distribution or a polarized plan capital P polarized plan. And that has a specific meaning, which is that that is a plan. It's a specific definition as a polarized training approach. And this can differ based on which study you're reading, but this is different from polarized small P polarized in the sense that you can polarize your training. So if you're just, if you just polarize your training, you're shifting emphasis more to that low zone intensity and more to the high zone intensity, and you're decreasing the amount of time that you're spending in that middle zone. So there's capital P polarized defining a particular training intensity distribution approach. And then there's small P polarized, which can refer to the degree of polarization and either polarizing, you know, pol moving your training distribution into a more polarized direction. <laughs> so trying to make this a little bit more clear, but this stuff is confusing and uh, we'll do our best to dist distinguish between capital P polarized and little P polarized. All right. So we have periodization. Now we've talked about training intensity distribution and polarized, but polarized is not the only approach to a training intensity distribution. So we actually see five main training intensity distribution approaches in the literature, and we'll see these in the studies that we're going to cover today. All training intensity dist distribution approaches are just different ratios of the same elements, stress categorized as low, moderate, or high intensity. It's important to note here that even the low intensity zone, zone one, is not the same as recovery. In this model, low, the low intensity zone is still a training stress. It's not the same as active recovery or rest because those parts of your periodization would be part of that recovery component in the equation. So again, it can get a little bit confusing, but the low intensity zone is still considered part of the stress component of that equation because it is a training stress. Okay. So the three training intensity distribution approaches that focus on a single zone are long, slow distance or high volume, low intensity, high intensity interval training or hit and threshold. So high volume, low intensity, also known as LSD, which is long, so distance focuses on that low intensity zone. And this requires pretty high volume in order to get enough of a training stimulus to stimulate those adaptations. High intensity interval training or hit, you can imagine <laughs> is the opposite of that. This one focuses on that high intensity zone three zone. And of course this is going to require a lot less volume to keep from overtraining. Between those two is what's called the threshold training intensity distribution. Now, this is again really confusing because there's also a threshold power zone and there's also a lactate threshold, but threshold as a training intensity distribution is an approach that focuses on that moderate intensity middle zone between LT1 and LT2. And now this is going to require more volume than the high intensity interval training because it's less intensity. So you need a little more volume, but it would require less volume than the long, slow distance because you're doing more intensity. Now this is, so I just want to jump in here. Yeah, Sorry, Amber. please do. This is yeah. the 80% to 99% of threshold training. And it can be easy to say, to hear threshold training and think of like uh, Coggins model and say, that means that's 95 to 105, which it's, it's different. And then we just want to make sure that's very clear in people's minds. So when we refer to threshold training inside, inside of a um, intensity distribution in these studies, we'll refer to it again is it's the, between the LT one and the LT two. Right. Exactly. 
Um, and these, these three models, because they focus on a single intensity, they're a little bit limited in their application because we know that we're adaptive machines. And so if you're always focusing on one zone, chances are you're going to need to switch something up. You might need to increase the, mag the magnitude or the novelty of the stress because eventually you're going to plateau because your body's just really good at adapting to this stuff. How many people ready, ready to hear me say bodies are amazing? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. The, now I said there's five primary training intensity distribution approaches. So the other two are training intensity, intensity distribution approaches that incorporate multiple intensities. So one of those is polarized, which we've already just talked about. And that one focuses on that low zone and on the high zone and really not much, if anything, in the middle. Then there's pyramidal. Pyramidal is a training intensity distribution that focuses most of your volume in that low intensity zone. The vast majority of your volume is in that low intensity zone. Then you have some in that middle intensity zone and you have a little bit in that high intensity zone. Th thus the name pyramidal, right? We have big base, small middle, smaller top. Both of these training intensity distribution models include stress and recovery toward adaptation. That's going back to that equation. And they incorporate a little bit more variety than those single intensity focused approaches. If you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, you can give it a thumbs down, but let us know what you would have done differently in the comments below. If you want to see more of these videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, check out trainerroad.com. Do it. If you think I have better hair than Jonathan, give it a thumbs up. If not, leave a comment. My hair is better than his.